If you're completely new to Ibiza and you don't know where to start, then this video is for you. Even if you have been before, you may as well watch it anyway because this video is loaded with information like hidden gems, pool parties, raves, nude beaches, places to chill, things to do, more pool parties, more raves and the best beaches in Ibiza. There's a lot of handy info coming up so get your notepad and pen ready, strap yourself in and get excited while I introduce you to the adults playground known as Ibiza. Hell yeah, welcome back to I'm So Ravy. Let's start by looking at the island real quick. The main areas you want to focus on are the east and west of the island. Let's call them the expensive side and the cheaper side. Ibiza town or Evisa is the capital of the island. And then you have the legendary San Antonio on the west, both connected by a handy highway that runs straight through the island. These are the main areas you want to focus on. This is where all the fun happens. The rest of the island has your yoga retreats and relaxing hotels dotted about if you want to stay away from the noise. But let's be honest, nobody goes to the party capital of the world to relax. Let's look at a visa. <laughs> Whether you're flying in or coming in by boat, this is the side of the island that you'll see first. Here you'll find Ibiza's most popular beach, Playa Dan Bossa, all the main clubs, which I'll talk about in a bit, the fancy and pricey hotels such as Ushuaia Beach Hotel and the Hard Rock to name a couple, the old town and the usual restaurants and nightlife. You will find budget hotels on this side too, but they'll be more expensive than the budget hotels in San Antonio. If you're going budget, then go for a Vibra hotel. They have like 30 of them on the island. They are super popular and they're everywhere, sometimes even next door to each other. Seriously. They have family and adults only hotels and they even do apart hotels where your room is a full blown apartment and not just a hotel room, which is handy for saving money because you don't have to eat out every night because you can cook your own food. This was our Vibra apartment in San Antonio. <laughs> Remember, they're budget, so you get what you paid for. But at 60 quid a night in the heart of San Antonio, you can't complain. And also, our balcony door doesn't want to close. You're just going to bend down and put it from the bottom. <laughs> so you get for a budget hotel. So this is the first holiday I've ever been on as an adult. Believe it or not, so I always backpack. I always go to places, stay in hostels. This is the first time I've been on a holiday where I've stayed in a hotel. I took a taxi from the airport. We brought a suitcase. A suitcase? Ugh. Who travels with a suitcase? You'll never see me travel with a suitcase, ever, besides this trip. But we're in Ibiza. It is beautiful. I actually came to Ibiza a couple of years ago to film this video, but I ended up getting the ferry from mainland Spain when I was doing my summer Euro trip. Ended up getting a ferry across, coming to the island and just partying hard for like six days, like all night, every night, and didn't even get my camera out once. So it was a complete fail, but um, here I am. I'm making it, finally making it. The cheaper side of the island, San Antonio, is by far the best in my opinion and is where I recommend staying. It's on the west which means it has the sunsets and along with them some legendary sunset cafes and clubs. 
This place has a huge amount of water activities and a contagious buzzing atmosphere. And it's not commercial. You aren't surrounded by shopping malls and fast food. You don't have people pestering you for boat tickets or club tickets as you walk down the street. This place just feels way more relaxed. But that being said, by night, this place comes alive. If you aren't heading over to the super clubs across the island, then stay in San Antonio and party. It's full of restaurants, bars and clubs. Make sure you check out the Welsh, Scottish and Irish bar all in a row. But go during the day because at night that entire street turns into Chav Central. Honestly, I'd never seen so many bum bags and Argos chains in my life. You can check out the famous Café del Mar at sunset, but expect to have a minimum spend of 250 euros if you want to sit on one of the sunset tables. Next door is Café Mambo, both of which come alive at night. Along the coast you'll find loads of cheaper alternatives to Café del Mar and Café Mambo. Or you can go to the decking at the beach with some beers and a Bluetooth speaker. The atmosphere is vibing there. San Antonio is also home to Ibiza's only youth hostel, Amistad Island Hostel. So if you're a solo traveller, it's perfect. It's where I stayed when I came here for the first time. With a live DJ every night and other solo travellers to hit the clubs with, the place was pumping. You'll also find a harbour here, where boat excursions and boat parties leave from. There's tons of water sports, the slingshot, pool parties and a load of beaches. And it's all within walking distance. If you want a proper breakfast, head to Fatso's Cafe for the best English breakfast on the island. But don't forget to remortgage your house before you do, as the place is fucking expensive. Worth it though, if you have a stinking hangover. Make sure you check out the reggae beach bar across the water. You can get some proper Jamaican scram there too. You can take a ferry across the water for cheap or just walk around from central San Antonio. And if you're a vapor, head to this shop. The location's in the description. They sell vapes about two euros cheaper than everywhere else. You're welcome. San Antonio has everything you need, but there will be times you'll want to get across the island. Getting across the island will cost about 30 to 35 euros by taxi and takes about 25 minutes. There's no need to try and agree on a price or haggle as the taxi drivers are mostly very honest and do it on the meter. If you're staying in San Antonio, there's no real reason to go across the island besides to get to the clubs or for the odd day trip to explore. So when deciding what side of the island you're going to stay on, it's worth figuring out how many times you reckon you'll nip across the island and whether you'll save money after factoring in the taxi rides. When getting a taxi, if there's two of you, just go to the taxi rank and find another couple to split the taxi with. You can do it after the clubs too. Everybody's looking to do it and it makes things much cheaper. During the day there are buses that go across the island costing just two euros ten and taking about 45 minutes. Then there's the disco bus which connects you to all the large clubs and costs four or five euros. It leaves from San Antonio main bus station every 30 to 45 minutes evening onwards. Or for complete freedom you can rent yourself a vehicle while you're there. You'll find scooter rental places everywhere, costing about 35 euros a day, which is nuts considering the bike I rented was the same and it was a 500. You can also rent cars and road legal quads and buggies too. If you have your license and want to rent a proper bike, I find only two places on the island where you can rent them. I wouldn't recommend the company I rented from as they tried ripping me off in the end. But the other company is Ibiza Custom Cycles. I've linked them below. These guys only rent Harley style bikes though. Does anyone else agree with me that Fanta Lemon tastes so much better when you're abroad? Anyway, it's sunny, but as soon as you go home, I won't even touch that shit. I'm Fanta Orange all the way. But Fanta Lemon... <clears throat> this is the part we've all been waiting for, the super clubs of Ibiza. Ibiza is full of clubs, but in this video I'm going to talk about the four main ones. These are the ones where you'll see some of the world's biggest DJs. Ibiza revolves around the raves. Literally, you'll see ads on taxis, billboards, ads in the hotel reception. The place is party first and foremost. I'm going to start with my personal favourite, Ashwaya. Hey, hey, hey. 
one of the world's most famous open air beach dance clubs located at the foot of Playa Den Bossa. This place is incredible and will not fail to deliver. With an iconic stage rocking different decor depending on the event that you're going to, mind blowing light shows, smoke effects, fireworks, flamethrowers, dancers on podiums, dance shows on the ground, giant water fountains and a pool. But unfortunately the pool is just for show, this isn't a pool party. The place has 5 bars and a pricey VIP area and is surrounded by hotel room balconies that you can stay at if you have the money for it. On stage you'll see some of the world's biggest DJs as well as some smaller acts we saw Lost Frequencies and Dimitri Vegas here. I'd recommend going to Ants which takes place every Saturday. At a show you'll be constantly wowed throughout the event, it really does live up to the hype. But get drunk before you go because drinks inside will cost upwards of 25 euros, even a bottle of water will set you back 14 euros here. What I do is I buy one bottle of water at the beginning of the event and then keep refilling it at the taps of the toilet. They say you can't drink the tap water in Ibiza but honestly it tastes just fine and it didn't do me or Ellie any harm. The rumours that they put salt in the tap water so that you have to buy water at the bar are a load of bollocks, it tastes just fine. Oh and ladies if there's a queue for the toilets, remember there are toilets upstairs that you can use, which it seems nobody knew about. For all the clubs you can buy tickets online for the best price or from the promoters on the street or at the beach for sometimes the same price as online but always cheaper than at the door or you can buy it from the door for full price. Prices vary largely from 35 euros to over 100 euros depending on the event that you're going to and the tier that you buy which dictates what time you're allowed to arrive. The earlier arrival time tiers are the cheapest. Ashwaya is a day rave and it closes at 11pm every event, but don't worry because directly across the road you have the number one nightclub in the world, High Ibiza. <laughs> The nightclubs don't generally start till about midnight and go on through till about 6am, but you can enter anytime so if you want to see one of the biggest residential DJs at high, such as Black Coffee or Fisher, who play there weekly throughout the season, their set won't start till about 3 or 4am, so if you wanted to arrive then just to see them, you could, but I normally get to the clubs about 1ish. Kai is fucking sick. It has three stages. The main one puts on some incredible light shows and has a banging sound system. Then there's a smaller rave room nearby and then there's the toilets. I spent most of my night here, it's so sick. You're so close to the DJ and whenever you need a slash you can just turn around and walk into one of the cubicles. If you get partied out and you need somewhere to relax, they have outdoor teepees with pillows inside where you can chill and chat to people. There's even a merch store there, a garden bar and upstairs there are other chill out rooms. Drinks here cost the same as a Shwire. If you want a blast from the past with some classic 80s music house remixed, I recommend going to Glitterbox. They were playing some absolute bangers there. Glitterbox takes place every Sunday at high. Then there's Pasha. This one is a lot smaller than High in Ashwire, but still hosts some big names. I seen Camel Fat here and I was meant to see Robin Schultz, but I slept through my alarm. I set my alarm for about 3am to go and see him, as we were a bit partied out at this point as it was one of our last nights of a 10 day holiday, so we didn't want to do the full night this time, but we slept through the alarms and missed him. Gutted. At Pasha, water is sold in cans and I remember it costing about 8 euros each. Drinks are a lot cheaper here but still very expensive, so drink up before you go peeps. The 
final big club is Amnesia. If you've ever seen Kevin and Perry, you already know about Amnesia. Amnesia is located kind of in the middle of the island, between Avisa and San Antonio. You'll pass it every time you travel across the island. I didn't hit up Amnesia this year, but I did go back in 22 to see Steve Aoki. I remember the place being a little outdated, to be honest. It's just one giant room with a bar at the back. But if you're a fan of Kevin and Perry, it's worth a visit. Plus, this place boasts some big events and some massive DJs too. If you want to see the season's lineup and where the DJs are playing, check out the link I've put in the video description which shows all the DJs playing each season. It'll vary every year so remember this info is accurate as of 2024 but it still gives you an idea of how it all works regardless of when you're watching this video. Let's not forget the pool parties. Every day you'll be able to find a pool party somewhere and they start early on in the season. Some as early as the end of April. Hotels will be throwing little pool parties here and there but some of the bigger more notable venues I'd recommend hitting up are O Beach, Ibiza Rocks Hotel and Destino at the Pasha Resort. I've linked the Ibiza pool party calendar below where you can view the pool parties and book your tickets too. I'd say San Antonio probably had more pool parties going on than Avisa did. We went to O beach for the kistery pool party which was honestly a dumb idea i don't know what i was thinking when i booked those tickets the music was naff i did not go to ibiza to listen to craig david so we only stayed for like an hour yeah so we left the kistery pool party early because the music is absolute shite <laughs> i didn't come to ibiza to listen to this shit Give us some house. Give me some drum and bass. Yeah, give us some drum and bass. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a bunch of smokers off. <laughs> Woo! The other pool party we went to was Ibiza Rocks to see Switch Disco, which was absolutely sick. We just got back from Ibiza Rocks. Ibiza Rocks. Ibiza Rocks, and we decided we got some pizza, which is somewhere, and we decided to make a blanket for. We just can't figure out how to make the roof because the sheets don't. We've got no they don't reach across. Yeah. So we're gonna make a blanket for. We basically just trashed our hotel room, really, haven't we? So when's the best time of year to visit Ibiza? Well the short answer is summertime, of course. But if you want to save a shit ton, I'd recommend looking into going at the end of May. We initially wanted to book for the end of June, but we couldn't get the time off work and had to move our trip forward to the end of May. Our hotel room was literally half the price at the end of May than it was at the end of June. Same hotel, same hotel room, half the price. A lot of the DJs don't have their opening parties until the beginning of June, and this is why it gets more expensive then so check out the season's DJ listings in the link in the description and check when the DJs have their opening parties to make sure you won't miss them for example some of the bigger names playing this year such as Calvin Harris Armin van Buren the Martinez brothers David Guetta and the residential DJs like Black Coffee and Fisher didn't even have their opening parties until June so we missed them but considering our holiday was half the price and we still got to see some sick DJs I'd say it was well worth going early to save money Likewise for the closing parties too at the end of the season, which start taking place around the first week of October. So in summary, the peak time is from the 1st of June until the end of September, but I'd recommend going any time between the 18th of May and the 12th of October. Let's talk about things to do on the island. As mentioned before, we rented a bike and rode around the entire island. The ride was really nice, especially up north with the windy cliffside roads. From Ibiza's most popular beach, Playa den Bossa, where you can chill and watch the planes coming into land, heading south you have the salt flats just south of the airport. If you google an image of these, you'll see flamingos, but just to manage your expectations, there were no flamingos. Nearby is what is apparently a nude beach, but people were dressed and they was like a restaurant and kids about so we didn't get naked you can find this hidden gem at Sakaleta Beach you find the cave by heading up the road next to the restaurant and then taking a right when you see this building then you'll see the cave on the right You 
have this amazing viewpoint on the south of the island called Mirador des Vedra. Calabasa Beach Club is a beach not too far from San Antonio that I'd recommend checking out. It's about 25 euros in a taxi from San Antonio. Heading north on the west coast, you have Cova de Canmarcia, which is an old smuggler's cave and costs 14 euros to enter. It has a nice cafe slash bar with some insane views too. From here, you could ride around the scenic mountainside roads to the northeast of the island where you'll find Agua Blanco, a nude beast that we truly embraced. We're just riding down this road with the phone in the phone holder there and it came flying out. I think we can get our 10 euros It looks back. like this. What, for the rental? For the phone holder. I don't have a smartphone, right? So now so we have... Fucked. Yeah, we're fucked. We're in the middle of Ibiza, like, I don't even know where we are and we don't have any directions now. Driving south from here you have the Las Dalias Hippie Market but it's only open on weekends and further south you have Old Town in Avisa which is definitely worth exploring. If you want somewhere to chill, head to Sescalinata in Old Town. It's a cosy little chill out bar with bean bags to relax on. Unfortunately, the only water park in Ibiza is closed down now. You can see the remains of it outside your plane window as you're coming into land. You can rent jet skis from San Antonio Harbour, but you have to follow a boat and you don't get the freedom to go where you want, which sucks, so we passed on that. The slingshot looks awesome, but costs a whopping 30 euros per person. And they also have go-karting just outside of San Antonio. And then you have the many, many boat excursions and boat parties to choose from. We did the Salvador boat excursion, which cost us 65 euros each, but had unlimited snacks and an open bar. It was a chilled one with paddle boarding and kayaking and stuff, and they took us to some cool spots. We also had the honor of meeting Kevin Abbey on this trip, so shout out guys if you're watching. You can take day trips to Formentera too from Avisa. You'll find the ticket office and other ticket vendors directly across the road from Avisa Harbour. Look at Ellie cooking with a spoon. <laughs> cooking green burgers with a spoon. I'm telling you, this is the weirdest barbecue you'll ever see in your life. Spanish guy shouting, Fuego! Fuego, yeah, there's a guy down on the street down there. He was shouting Fuego, because when the coals are just getting light, they're on fire, aren't they? Fuego! He decided to walk and turn to calm down. Even though he didn't understand me, because he didn't speak English. Ibiza is so sick guys, you could say it's overhyped but it delivers, it lives up to the hype and it's honestly one of my favourite places on earth. The atmosphere is just buzzing and relaxed all at the same time, everybody's so chilled out, even the ambulances are excited to be here.
If you liked the video or it helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more travel related awesomeness. And let me know in the comment section if you're going to Ibiza this year, as I'll be heading back there for the closing parties, so who knows, I might even see you there. Seriously, go to Ibiza. Get your asses there. Why are you still watching this video? Go to Ibiza.